Hey guys, this is Comic Uno, and today I'm doing a review for Legend of Korra, and this episode's called A New Spiritual World. Uh, yeah, so let's talk about this episode. Uh, so we get to see Jinora and Korra. Uh, they go into the spiritual world, and uh, everything seems cool. You know, it's like, oh, this this new place, and Jinora's having a good time. And then everything just goes to shit after. Uh, because we see them sink into the sinkhole, and uh, Korra ends up being uh, separated from Janora. Janora, she actually goes to the owl from Last Airbender. Uh, you know, the guy who knew everything from the library. And uh, so we get to see that interaction. Uh, but then Unalak comes in and says, Yeah, so the owl trusts me more, so. Come on, Janora, I'm gonna kidnap you, and uh, I'm gonna use you as hostage uh, for Korra to open up the por uh, the, uh, the portal. And that happens in this episode, um, because in Korra's journey, we get to see the awesome part, um, where Korra turns into a little kid, which I'll explain why it's kind of weird, but also a good thing they did that. Um, so she turns into a little kid, and she sees Iroh from Last Airbender, you know, uh, Zuko's uncle, like the kindest guy in, uh, in the series. Um, so he's actually kind of her mentor through this uh, period, and saying, you have to save this bird, um, bring the bird to um, the place it has to go, and that's kind of the meaning of being an avatar, and uh, that's going to help you find Jinora. Um, and it actually does end up helping her find Janora, because then she turns older again to her regular core state, and she finds Janora, just not in time, and uh, because Unalak has his powers, uh, she opens up the portal, and uh, she wakes up without Janora, and Tenzin's like, where's my daughter? And uh, Janora still hasn't w woken up, so we'll have to see if she'll go back to the spirit world, can she go back to the spirit world, and uh, how Tenzin's going to react to this, because this is... This is her, his kid, you know? So, uh, we already saw kind of his reaction during the end of this episode. Um, I like this episode. Um, I like a lot of the Last Airbender references. I have not seen every Last Airbender episode, but I've seen a lot of key episodes. Um, and I've seen the Owl episode, which I was like, alright, I, I know where this is from. You know, again, I don't know the Owl's name, but I do know where it's from. And I'm like, alright, I know where this is from. Love the reference. And uh, I think it worked really well here. Um, and I love... Uh, the, you know, when we met the owl, something that was interesting is like, I'll let you in if you tell me a piece of information I don't know. And uh, Janora tells about the radio, and I thought that was kind of cool, and how he thought there was just a little man in the radio. Uh, so I thought that was a very interesting plot point. But the best part, honestly, was Iroh in this episode. We get to see Iroh come back and just be the guy he's always been, that comforting... Old, wise old man, and uh, I really enjoyed that here, and seeing him interact with Korra. That definitely was my favorite part. Um, love Iroh from Last Airbender. Um, but uh, one thing I want to talk about is Korra turning into a kid, which at first I'm like, why is Korra a kid? And all I can think about is that line from Korra is like, I'm Korra and I'm the Avatar. Like, was that echoing in your head when you were watching that? Because that's the only time we've actually heard Korra talk as a kid. And I felt like that was such an iconic line because it's that first episode. It's like, I'm Korra and I'm the Avatar. Uh, and she's a little less kick-ass here, but... Um, we do get to see her more gentler side, where we don't see that with Korra, like, ever. Um, so I was really, you know, I think it was a good idea they turned her into a kid, because it gave her that innocence to save that bird without questioning it. Um, would I have liked older Korra to interact with Iroh? Yeah. I mean, is there a chance that could happen? Yeah, I think there is. It's like, oh, you helped me. Uh, I, but I think they kind of needed this. I think what this season in general, we started the season of Korra being a, really a raging bitch, and I think we could all agree with that. Um, she was a very unlikable character in the beginning of the season, you're like, oh, why hasn't she changed? I think the writers did it on purpose, because we, we see scenes like this where it's like, alright, this is how Korra is going to change into the avatar we want her to be. Um, because she has to learn, alright, I can't be a selfish person, and she, this whole season she was really selfish, and that's why she didn't have a good relationship with Mako. Um, so I like the journey she is going on, and I think that's what this childhood innocent thing in this episode really meant. So, uh, for me, do I wish she was a teenager during that portion? Yeah, but I kind of understand the direction they're going. And it also shows that, yeah, when I help people, they're going to help me in the, in, you know, in return. And, uh, I think it's going to, again, show what exactly Avatar is. I think Aang had less of a problem with that because his morality, his, his personality really was, I gotta go help people. He never really had 
any weakness with that. And I think, again, Cora's a little bit of a more selfish character because she has to learn that she has to help people. Uh, and that's something we get to see a lot in this episode. Um, and also, when I was watching this episode, I really enjoyed the Janora portions because you're like, at least when I was um, watching it, I was like, oh, this character shouldn't even be um, a main character, and she really is be becoming her own character, and I think we really do see that here, and I like that she became her own character in such a main portion of the season. Um, again, a character that maybe wouldn't have had a chance, and uh, that last scene with Tenzin's, like, it's kind of powerful there. Um, now the bad parts. Um, you know, I'm still not totally convinced about the story arc. I really, you know, I compare Amon to Unalak. Um, you know, I'm watching Unalak, and I'm like, you're not an Amon. Like, Amon was this epic villain, and it just felt like that, those great 13 episodes, and just that build up to that villain. And Unalak just does not feel like that. And even the, the Dark Spear, I love the journey of the spirit world. I think it's needed in this Avatar, um, series, because it's something different that we, you know, we know that the Avatar is connected to the spirit world, but we didn't really think about it in this way, so I, I like that we're thinking about it a little bit more. But... I don't love the story arc with the Dark and um, Unalak and all that. I just don't, I still am not totally grabbed on it. And when I saw Unalak in this episode, I'm like, Amon was better. So I want to say, like, Unalak is a different type of character, a different type of villain. But there's nothing that doesn't make him two-dimensional. There's no emotion there. And uh, Amon and, um, I can't think of uh, the other guy's name at the moment, um, you know, Amon's uh, brother. For some reason, I can't think of it. Um, but... They had this emotional connection and this whole emotional story, and comparing to Unalak, he's a very two-dimensional character. Um, but I'm still rooting for that that, that last uh, maybe two episodes or last whatever, that epic battle. Because uh, I think it will be an epic battle with all the spirits. Are they ignoring other characters like Mako, Sami, and Bolin? Yeah, I've complained about that in the, in the past, and I feel like they should have balanced characters a little bit better in Season 2. Um... But the essence of this episode was really good. I liked the character building for Korra and uh, Janora and even Tenzin. Um, but then the main plot, I think, is what really suffers in uh, Season 2. Um, and I really hope there is a point where I'm like, alright, I kind of understand why they did this. Um, and I hope there is a point with that. Um, I hope we get to see Juan with Korra. That's just something I was hoping in this episode. And I keep hoping with every episode I see. I'm like, I want a Juan and Korra interaction. But very happy with the last Airbender references. Um, yeah, so I was pretty happy with this episode. Um, you know, there was some under, you know, under, um, whelming parts of this episode, but uh, overall I think there are some really good parts here to really grow at least Korra's character. But I hope you guys enjoyed. Of course I'll be doing a review for Legend of Korra next week. And guys, uh, don't forget to follow me on Twitter for comic and know and the right situations. And don't forget to like my Facebook page. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.